Before we dive on into today's video, I want to start off by asking you a simple question. Do you think that Derek Carr and Chris Olave are a top 10 wide receiver quarterback duo in the NFL? I stumbled across an article that suggested that they may or may not be. I'm going to share what Bleacher Report had to say and a whole lot more here in just a second. But sound off in the comment section, get loud, and make your voices heard. As for the topics we are discussing in today's video, like I teased off the top, Chris Olave and Derek Carr, are they a top 10 duo? And then on top of that, edge rusher out of Penn State, Pork Chop Robinson has visited with the black and gold. But let's dive into the top 10 from Bleacher Report in terms of the wide receiver quarterback duos in the NFL. No surprises right here with number one, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. They are elite. Tua and Tyreek. Dak and CD, I think that that one might be a little bit high. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, I can see that. Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, they're pretty quality players. Jared Goff, Amon Ross, say Brown, Brock Purdy, Brandon Ayuk, I think that they should be much higher on this list. Geno Smith and D.K. Metcalf, eh, not terrible. Matthew Stafford and Puka Nakua. And at number 10 is Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans over at the scumbag Tampa Bay Buccaneers which is hilarious because if Marshawn Lattimore is playing, Mike Evans isn't doing anything. But in terms of the honorable mentions from the Bleacher Report article I saw, they listed Patrick Mahomes and Rasheed Rice, Derek Carr and Chris Olave, and CJ Stroud and Nico Cohn. So those are your three honorable mention teams. Honestly, I, it's, I, I agree that they should have been mentioned. Maybe there's an argument for a top 10 there, here and there, you know, moving around some of that order. But let's kick it to Bleacher Report and what they specifically said. Derek Carr had an up and down first year with the New Orleans Saints, in part because he played through injuries. But the 10 year veteran established a strong rapport with Chris Olave, who caught 87 passes for 1,123 1, yards and five touchdowns as a focal point in the 11th ranked off, or passing offense in the league. Perhaps the Saints offense takes a step in the right direction under new offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak. If it does, look out for Carr and Olave to pick up where they left off in 2023. Now, I do think that Chris Olave can be a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. I, I truly do believe he has the skill set, he has the intangibles, and he has all of the qualities of a top 10 wide receiver. Now, in terms of Derek Carr, he is a definition of aggressively average. I mean, Sure, the quarterback rating or passer rating might have been high. He did throw a decent amount of touchdowns, had a lot of empty yards and garbage time or whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of stat padding in terms of the production from Derek Carr. But I do think that Carr is just aggressively average. I think that he is like legitimately anywhere from the 13th to the 16th or 17th best quarterback in the NFL. I mean, it is dead freaking center for me and Derek Carr in terms of where he ranks. But if... Clint Kubiak can get that offense humming. This might be a different conversation here in a few months. But Olave's career has started off so, so good. Over 100 targets in both seasons. 87 uh, receptions, 72 receptions in 2022. And in 2023, he had better, he had more yards and more touchdowns. The average took a dip, but he was a, a still a very productive player and found the end zone that one extra time. I absolutely love Chris Olave, and I think that he is a phenomenal football player. And in case you didn't know, he changed his jersey number. He's going back to Dose, like he wore at Ohio State when he was a Buckeye. So if you love Chris Olave, show him some love in the comment section by typing the jersey number two down below. All right, next we're going to dive into Chop Robinson and the report about him meeting with the New Orleans Saints just a few days ago, a week or so ago. But before we dive into that, got to give a big time shout out to Game Time. It's my favorite ticketing app. And to be honest, you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next live event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, theater, and all sorts of live events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, and views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So if you download the Game Time app and use code CHATSPORTS, you can get $20 off. If you're looking to go to this LSU-Arkansas baseball series, 
My hogs are going to kick the teeth out of the Tigers at Baumwalker Stadium. If you want to make that trip up to beautiful Fayetteville, Arkansas, you can use game time. But if you want to catch a Pels game, if you want to go watch some March Madness, or if you want to go see a concert, any sort of live event in New Orleans, in Louisiana, or across the country, game time is the app for you. So download the game time app and use code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off your first purchase. Download the game time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed terms to apply. All that information is in the comment section and description of this video. So let's discuss the pre-draft visit because Chop Robinson, a really intriguing prospect out of uh, Penn State, he is, or he has met with the New Orleans Saints before the Penn State Pro Day just a few days ago, not too long ago. But let's take a look at the Nittany Lions production this past year. He was pretty solid. And every year, he was pretty, pretty good. Now, in terms of the production, you can see it on your screen, but he also offers a lot of other things as well. And I do think that when he transferred from Maryland to Penn State, it was a good thing for him. And he is just turned 21 in January, so he is a very, very young prospect that can still develop into some really good things. The dude was heavy and dense when he was born. That's why they call him Pork Chop Robinson. And the Saints, I do believe, are just doing their due diligence here. I don't think that they're, you know, dead set on going and getting a Chop Robinson. But if a bunch of their top draft prospects are gone and, you know, Chop Robinson's available, let's say, in the second round, maybe that's an, uh, an avenue that the New Orleans Saints could explore. Because for me personally, I think you go offensive line in round one, and then maybe you go grab an edge rusher or a pass catcher in round two, and Chop Robinson, I think, could be available at number 45 for the New Orleans Saints. Now, in terms of some pros and cons, you know, we like to do, we get the research and we consolidate it down for you. Chop Robinson, he has a great first step and really, really nice bend, but he does struggle a little bit versus the run. Now, I will say him being undersized is a little bit of a con, but he does have insane traits and he has incredible attributes and his athleticism is unbelievable. And to be honest, the production did lack a little bit in terms of like the type of player we're talking about. But when you look at his uh, relative athletic score from the NFL Combine, this guy is a freaking anomaly. I mean, you're looking at this. And if I'm the New Orleans Saints front office, I'm licking my chops seeing that 9.72 relative athletic score. The 40-yard dash, stellar. The 20-yard split and the 10-yard split, incredible. Really good at the uh, shuttle. Really solid vertical. Really, really good broad jump. The only thing that this guy is lacking is that height and weight. However, I think that an edge rusher is something that the Saints need to explore this draft. Chop Robinson could plug into this depth chart so nicely. If you ask me, I would love to replace Peyton Turner with a guy like Chop Robinson. I know Tano Passanio isn't making a ton of money, but I'm trying to get younger and cheaper. So maybe you can have him replace Tano Passanio. For the record, Passanio was top five in sack production for the Saints last year, but I don't think that this is a guy who's going to replace Chase Young or Cam Jordan or Carl Granderson. Maybe Isaiah Foskey at some point, but this is a guy who I think could be a really good piece where there's some really nice talent on the defensive end spot, and I think that he could develop and turn into a really good player in the black and gold. Now, I want to ask you this question to round things out today. Would you draft Chop Robinson? Just give me a simple D for draft or a P for pass in the comment section. For me, I wouldn't mind going Chop Robinson. I kind of mentioned this a second ago, but I would want to go with it in round two. Like, if we got him in round two, I'm happy with the pick. But I do think that number 14 overall for a guy like Robinson is a bit of a stretch. Of course, in a few years, maybe I'm sitting here saying that was the dumbest take I've ever had. But the edge rushing draft targets, there's a lot of intriguing options. I love Jared Verse. Lay to Latu, an incredible story and an incredible production. I do fear that Dallas Turner is going to be an Atlanta Falcon. I would love for him to be in New Orleans, but every mock draft I've seen in the last couple weeks has sent Dallas Turner to Atlanta. We talked about Chop Robinson on today's video, but Darius Robinson is another name to keep an eye out for. I think that he has Cam Jordan-like features, and I think that he could be a really, really nice player. And on top of that, 
You also don't have to go and get them in round early in round one. But if you wanted to go round two, I also see this as an option. Wide receiver, tight end, Dennis Allen. He recently spoke about a, uh, their draft philosophy and that they're not done targeting pass catchers, specifically pass catchers, not wide receivers. That's what Dennis Allen said. But Xavier Leggett would love that option in round two. Brock Bowers, if he's there at 14, I don't think that's a bad pick at all. Roma Dunze would also be an excellent pick. Jatamion Sanders, a tight end out of the University of Texas, didn't have a single drop last year. I think that he could be a really good second-round option as well. And you know him, you love him, Brian Thomas Jr., the LSU wide receiver in round one. I've said it before, and I'll continue to hit this home. Offensive line is the biggest need in the draft for New Orleans. But you can't go and force that pick. If a bad offensive line, or if all the top offensive linemen, all top tackles are gone, Go grab a pass catcher. Go grab an edge rusher. Because there's a lot of depth in every round for offensive line, and I think that that's a place that the Saints could get creative and figure out a way to fill that hole while still bringing in some playmakers at different positions for the team. Now, sound off for me. We're going to round out the show. We're going to hop on out of here and let you enjoy your Easter weekend. But which possession, which possession, which position are you drafting in round one? Are you going offensive line, defensive line? tight end, like a Brock Bauer specifically, a wide receiver, you're going to go something crazy like a quarterback, a safety, a linebacker. Uh, this is your turn to sound off and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And as always, y'all stay golden. Have a wonderful Easter weekend.